Good afternoon and welcome. I am Barbara Butler, the principal of William Floyd High School. Thank you all for gathering here today so Quasi can announce his decision, answer all of your questions during this time, and stay focused on his studies and the remainder of his senior year here. Today is a perfect and fitting day for this announcement as it coincides with William Floyd's College and Career Awareness Week, and specifically, our College and Career Fair tonight. Over the past 15 years, I have had the opportunity to serve the William Floyd community. During my time here, I have been able to work with some of the finest leaders, teachers, staff, supportive parents, and most importantly, the greatest kids. Quasi Enan is certainly one of those great kids. During my tenure, which includes serving as principal of William Packer Middle School, I have been able to watch Quasi grow from an energetic, enthusiastic sixth grader to a poised, humble, gifted young man. He exemplifies the greatness in William Floyd and how hard work, dedication, and taking advantage of opportunities pays off. It is no surprise to me that Quasi was accepted to all eight Ivy League schools. He is smart, hardworking, and compassionate, not to mention he is musically talented. On behalf of the entire William Floyd School community, we congratulate Quasi and his family. We wish him success and look forward to the amazing things he will accomplish in life. And at this time, I would like to introduce a visionary and leader of the William Floyd School District, Dr. Paul Cassiano, Superintendent of Schools. Um, thanks, thank you everyone for being here today and to help us um, welcome Quasi into his, uh, his new college and his uh, important decision. My name is Paul Cassiano, I'm the superintendent of the William Floyd School District. The college application uh, acceptance commitment process is always somewhat of a whirlwind for a high school senior and their parents. That entire process was highlighted in a remarkable way by Quasi's experience, applying to and being accepted by all eight Ivy League colleges, in addition to other prestigious colleges to which he had applied. Today, Quasi will announce his choice of a college, of a college to attend, and to continue his pursuit of his hopes and dreams. Before that happens, I would like to take this opportunity just to tell you how proud I am of Quasi. Last week, I was in the cafeteria of Hobart Elementary School, where Quasi had attended, and employees were talking proudly about how they remember him from when he was very young. Not that he's very old now, by any standard. There's so much to be proud of. His capacity, his aspirations, his hard work, his wisdom in giving thoughtful consideration to the guidance he received, and his perseverance. He's a credit to himself, his family, our high school, our school district, and our community. I always say that the incredible student talent at William Floyd is the best kept secret. So now the secret is out, thanks to Quasi's amazing accomplishment. We have so many successful students with tremendous capacity. By unintentionally 
attracting attention to himself, Quasi has brought attention to them all. Best of luck with your decision, Quasi. I know you will be successful and continue to make us proud. And now we will have some remarks from one of Quasi's teachers, a beloved teacher here at William Floyd High School and also a community member, Ms. Vivica Narji. Good afternoon. It is my great honor to celebrate this exciting moment with Quasi Annan, the Annan family, and the entire William Floyd community. My name is Vivica Narji, and last year, Quasi was a student in my AP English language class. Thus, I first had the privilege of getting to know this incredible young man through his careful articulation of complex ideas. Eventually, I would also come to know him as the most likely student to lead a dynamic class discussion, and perhaps the most likely to break out into song, and even the most likely to sing a holiday gram from atop a desk. He is also the student who emailed me one summer morning to announce his stellar AP score after reading his touching note of thanks for the time and attention I had put into teaching his entire class. I laughed through my tears when I noticed that Quasi had written the email before the sun had risen. It was just like Quasi to think of others as he excitedly celebrated his own hard-earned success. In the classroom, I was consistently impressed with Quasi's wireless work ethic. But what most impressed me about him was how he set a standard of success through his strength, gratitude, and humility. Those of us who are lucky enough to know him know that as he approaches tasks and showcases talents, he always does so with the greatest appreciation and respect for his peers, the faculty, and our school community. As he interacts with us, we see so much of ourselves in him. Thus today, we also celebrate our unique contributions as scholars, musicians, actors, athletes, teachers, and leaders. Quasi reminds all of us that success is predicated on good humor, positive relationships, and a recognition that opportunities abound. Essentially, Quasi so readily embraces challenges because he is the product of his parents' high expectations and continual support. The faith that they have in their son's abilities and the unconditional love that they have for him have laid the foundation for his academic and personal triumphs. Moreover, as valued members of the William Floyd community, Mr. and Mrs. Ennin have also raised Quasi to believe in the collective vision that this community has of itself, one of promise and limitless potential. In short, since I met Quasi, he has consistently demonstrated that he has the personality and the habits of mind that are necessary to positively contribute to a thriving college community. As we sit here proudly anticipating Quasi's announcement, we know that this great feat, this universal acknowledgement of his innate intelligence, talent, diligence, and service to others is just the start of a wondrous journey. It is with incredible pride, enthusiasm, and respect that I present to you, Mr. Quasi Eno.
Dr. Cassiano, Mrs. Butler, and members of the media, thank you for coming and sharing this moment with me. Before I announce my decision, there are many people I would like to recognize and thank, because without their assistance, I would not be in this position. First, my parents, because without their encouragement, I would not have had the initial drive to strive for excellence. Next, the school teachers, administration, and my William Floyd school community who fostered in me a love for learning. In particular, there were several music teachers within the school and privately who helped me develop an appreciation for music and the ability to perform. I'm extremely grateful for the warm welcome, generosity that each university extended to me throughout this decision-making process. Each school has unique characteristics and so much to offer, which made this an incredibly difficult decision. I look forward to the next phase of life and the amazing opportunities that await me. I'm excited and proud to announce that this fall, I'll become a member of the Yale University Class of 2018. So at this time, we'll take questions. Um, you can respect the fact that Quasi is 17 and uh, one of them. Um, we'd like to do it in an organized fashion. Okay, thank you. Uh, I visited my the colleges and my experience there and the professors I met and the friends I made, in the atmosphere of each college, I narrowed it down and uh, I'm hoping that someday after college I can enter medical school, graduate, and become a successful doctor. Can you talk a little bit about how the schools tried to woo you in the recent weeks? Um, the schools themselves weren't very particular. They, I'm a student, admitted student, just like the rest of the, each class, and I had emails offers to video chat, um, incentives to come see the schools during their visits, so. How, how did you turn um, the schools down? Uh, I have to go on each website and uh, formally accept and, or deny the offers that they've given me. Well, you had said that uh, financial aid would be an issue in your decision, was it? And can you give us an idea of uh, if it was equal across the board, or if Yale gave you a better package? Um, financial aid was a very important factor. You need money to go to college. And um, for that, I worked with the financial offices at some of the schools that I preferred. And in the end, it was for the um, Ivy League schools, met my aid with the same amount. And so Yale was one of them, and I picked Yale in the end. Um, to start, my Bulldog Days experience, the visit days last week, was incredible. I met geniuses from all across the world, and everyone there was so friendly and inviting, and the residential college system there is just wonderful for each student, and I believe that their deep appreciation and love for music, like I have, was very critical for me deciding to go there. Um, I now know a little bit more about how the media works. <laughs> uh, I've learned how the internet reacts to stories. And I've learned um, how to decipher between your closest friends, your acquaintances, and those who may not like you so much. But overall it taught me more of what it means to be a mature college student. Well, most students don't have a press conference and they announce which college they're going to go to. How did you decide to do this one? To be honest, <laughs> I wanted a one-time um, announcement so I wouldn't interrupt my studies anymore. Mm -hmm. I have AP tests coming soon, so that was most of why. How are you going to spend the summer before college? Uh, I do hope to find a job or internship somewhere around this area and to enjoy my last time here in Shirley, Mastic, William Floyd in general 
as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make yell with all these up. This is a situation where all eight were in the line at the end. You don't have to announce which ones were, but did you slowly narrow your list down to one, or so it was sort of like a bracket for it? It was a gradual decrease into ones I preferred and then yell. And Yale was always um, the front runner, I, I think. Um, but have you have you been to New Haven? Yeah, I was there um, last week from Tuesday through Thursday for their Bulldog Days, 2014. Did your parents help you at all come to your decision? Uh, for the most part, they stayed just supporting whichever school I decided to go to. Some people have said that you know the entire country of young people is looking to be the next quasi, which is your kind of inspiration to students who have Ivy League aspirations. Do you see yourself that way? Uh, and one other quick question: Who accepted you first? Person accepted me first back in December. Applied the early action, okay. and I see myself as a symbol, hopefully, so that more kids hear about these schools, or even not these schools, but appreciate higher education and college and what to expect, what to hope for when they become seniors and they're ready to go to college themselves or whatever they want to do. You seem clearly um, a bright and exceptional young man. Is there one thing that you, that you would impart as, as far as the key to success for those that may you know, have all the natural gifts that you do? Or, or besides your natural gifts, what's, what's the key to success, to your success as you stand here today? I think always setting standards for yourself, you know what parents or teachers tell you, because at the end of the day, you're the one going to college or doing whatever you do in life, and you need to have your passions, the things that you love doing most, if that happens to be learning, education, if you develop that self-driven force to push yourself as far as you can go, I think any student, no matter where they're coming from, will at least do better than they have before. After all this media and the letterman appearance, do you feel any added pressure now going to Yale day one? Not at all. Um, I believe every professor treats kids fairly because there are students from all across the world and celebrities and people like that of that stature, status, that attend these schools. So I'm mostly excited to meet all the new friends I'll find in college and the new experiences I'll have and new beginnings. Thank you. Thank you. Can we hear from the audience? Mr. and Mrs. Heaney would like to say a couple more. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Tassiano, Princess Batla, and the entire William Freud's school community. Uh, on behalf of my family and friends, we would like to say a big thank you for your continual help and support for our son, Percy Enning, and for the difference you made in his life up to this point. Uh, we words cannot express our gratitude for all that you've done for him. We are very appreciative for everything. And we would like, I would like to say that our son, Percy, and his sister, Adra, were precious gifts to us from God. So we made sure that we take good care of them from the time they were young. So that's why we try to put them um, on the right path, take them to church, and install a strong moral uh, qualities in them. And we thank God that so far, He's proving himself to be um, a child of God and proving himself to be on the right path. We only hope that from this time onward, you stay focused and continue to do uh, the uh, high acad academic achievement that he's been proving himself to be. We only hope that he will be as responsible citizen as possible. This is all we ask. And we thank you all so much for coming and for all that you've done for him. Thank you. Are you surprised by his success or is, is this Very normal? surprised, very surprised. When I opened, uh, he wanted to try and I was like, ah, 
beginning he went, he just wanted to go to college. And then later he said, ah, uh, friends were talking to him, why don't you try the IBIS? He said, oh, I will give it a try. So he studied so hard, he was very dedicated, studying. And I, I only hope that he will be an inspiration to all kids, that with hard work and dedication, they can all make it to his level and even surpass him. Uh, I was really surprised that he got into all the colleges. We were expecting it, but it was very impressive and we are so proud and so excited about all, all that he's achieved. Have you been surprised by how much media attention he's got? Yes, we are not used to that. So <laughs> we were really, really <laughs> running away from the media because we never, it never happened to us before. So it was all something new to us. Thank everyone for being here. Yes, uh, my name is Vince uh, Enin, Kwasi's dad. Uh, we appreciate all your efforts from the, from the, from the William Ford High School. We we very very happy for all the endowment, all the encouragement that they have provided our son, Kwasi. I know when he was born, we are very 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 much inspiration on in his life trying to encourage him to be the best person that he can be. I know when he was young, um, he went through normal life, I'll say that. He went through normal life. People think that Kwasi is like an angel or somebody who was uh, what, <laughs> sheltered. Really, we gave him a lot of freedom, even though we were at the same time very strict on him in terms of his academics and the way he behaved. We made sure that he set really good examples for people, others to follow. As a result, we, you know, we encourage his spiritual life. We took him to church, Methodist Church, here in Bayshore. And um, he, used to, you know, he humbled himself. And as a result, we are seeing all the qualities that he learned from us as a young, as a young child. We only pray that as he go, going forward, he will stay focused and not be distracted. Thank you very much for all of you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Both seem like wonderful parents. I'm just curious, what have you said to your daughter <laughs> well, we, 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 we told her, look, at this moment, you see what your, your brother has done. I believe you can do better than him. Even though some people think what he's achieved is like a world record. I mean, there are only eight IVs. If there was another IV built, you would be the first person to have nine IVs. <laughs> I believe you can do that. But even though it looks like it's impossible. But she's also a smart girl. You know, she's following her brother's uh, footsteps and she hopes to really surpass her brother. We hope to see, we live to see. Can you just explain a little, you said you were strict uh, with his academics. Can you talk about how? How strict? Well, I told them, look, your worst grade in school should be a 95. That means you should be going almost like straight A's in school. And I always encourage them, look, you can do it. Okay, I used to teach them when I was when they were young. I used to teach them from what, from elementary school to middle school to some of high school. At some point, I said, look, at this point, I can't do it anymore. But I really gave a very strong foundation from the beginning. Okay, I used to go over all their homeworks when they come to school. They go over the homework and even go beyond the homework. So they were really developing the interest at an early age. So right now, it's, even though it's a lot of surprising, at the same time, it's not surprising because we gave them a really, really good foundation. That's what is, you know, leading to all this you know, publicity that we are all seeing. Yeah. That's how you say you spell your names? Ebenezer, like Scrooge. <laughs> yes. E-B-E-N-E-Z-E-R. That's my first name. And your wife's first name? Doreen. How old is she? Uh, Joyce. She's 14. 14. Ajua, A D W O A. A D. Yes, D as in David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone.